Tell me what happened. He, he had the hole because cause mommy put his thing, finger in him. <laughs> <laughs> so your mommy did that? Yes. Oh, no. Can you fix him? I sure can. Could you show me where the hole is? Here. Here it is. And mommy did that? Hey, look. Hey, look. Here it is. Okay. I can fix that. Thanks. <laughs> He's a little over dramatic. I have this giant bag of things that people have given me to mend. I have had this bag of things. There's some things that have been in here for an awfully long time. Uh, and now we're all in quarantine, so I don't really have an excuse as to why I couldn't fix them yet. But it's all things that people have given me to mend, and I just keep putting them in this bag. I'm gonna grab a few things from it to work on today. First thing in the bag is Teddo. As you heard, my sister stuck her finger through his neck and it was very traumatic for him. So let's fix him up first. Everyone say hi to Teddo. The first thing you will wanna do is flip Teddo over, supporting the head and neck, and deliver five back slaps using the heel of your hand between the shoulder blades. Flip him over and place two fingers just below the nipple line and give five quick chest thrusts. Repeat as needed. This has absolutely nothing to do with sewing, but if you are fixing toys for little ones, chances are you may need to know how to save a choking infant one day. Consider this a refresher from your favorite x-ray tech. Anyway, grab a needle and some thread. I'm gonna double my thread just because it'll make it a little stronger. Put the needle in a secure spot while you tie a couple of knots on the end of that thread. Sorry, Teddo. I was going to do the ladder stitch, but I couldn't really see due to all the fluffy bear hair, so I just did a whip stitch instead. Best to use a coordinating color thread, but I didn't really have one. All I'm doing is some stitches really close together, in and out directly across from each other, and then moving the needle over slightly for the next stitch. This is probably not the most earth shattering tutorial in the world, but this is how I did it. Just keep checking to make sure that everything's secure and there's no stuffing coming through the stitches. When you get to the end, make a few knots to tie off the thread and then push the needle inside the seam and out a spot a little bit away. Pull tight and snip the thread. The thread will then be hidden inside. Done! Even using white thread, you could barely see the stitches. See what I did there? All fixed up and ready to give back to my nephew. Next up is a onesie I bought for my other nephew at a craft show. 
I was super bummed out when my sister told me that it wouldn't unsnap. She had several people try to unsnap it, and it ended up ripping. It was crazy how strong the snaps were. By the way, she also wanted me to add that she does in fact know how snaps work. So I decided the easiest thing would be to turn it into a t-shirt. I made sure it was laying flat and even on my cutting mat and hacked off the bottom. Since it's jersey fabric, it won't fray, so you can actually leave it like this. But if you do that, it will roll, so I decided to finish the edge. That also gave me an excuse to use my new serger. I tested it on the fabric that I cut off first. It seemed to work fine, so I serged along the raw edge of what is now a t-shirt. Just make sure you don't stretch the fabric too much. Take your time and keep adjusting the fabric as needed. I also didn't have the blade up for this because I didn't want to lose any length of the shirt. Make sure you leave some extra thread when you cut because we are going to thread that into a needle and thread that back through into the stitches. This will help the serger threads from unraveling. and then just cut off any extra. Then fold in right along that edge and pin. You can measure with the ruler or fold it in half to make sure it's even. Choose a coordinating thread because we're going to be doing some top stitching. Choose a wide zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. That will help keep it a little bit stretchy at the bottom. Also take off that removable accessory tray if you can. It just makes it a little easier to get right along that edge. Again, try not to stretch the fabric too much, and also make sure your stitches are wide enough to catch that entire serged edge underneath. Always forward and back stitch. Done. I think it got pretty cute. Last on my list for today is one of my mother-in-law's shirts. I was putting this off because it's a silky sheer fabric and I was honestly nervous I was gonna make it worse. I started by cutting all of the fraying threads. Then I tried to get the fabric to lay as flat as possible. I read that if you use tissue paper under your fabric, it will help it feed evenly through your sewing machine. So I ripped a piece that was a little bit longer than the hole and clipped it all together. Make sure you pick a coordinating thread for the top and the bobbin because both sides of stitches will be seen. I chose a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine and ran that through first to help the edges from fraying.
Then I went back and did a straight stitch to connect the old seam with the new seam. Then I attempted to rip the tissue paper off, but it was stuck in there pretty good. I ended up taking it over to the sink and just wetting that tissue paper so then I could pick it off a little bit easier. I also added a few drops of fray check just in case. And then when I picked up the shirt again, I thought for a split second I was experiencing a glitch in the matrix because the hole was back. Turns out there was another hole on the opposite side in the exact same spot. So I repeated everything I just did. And I think it got pretty good, even if there are still tiny bits of tissue paper stuck to it. It will come out in the wash.